you're an athlete suffering from any injury or pain in any joints or muscles that's been lingering, first of all, take the advice of your medical professional or doctor. First and foremost, this is just meant to be a quick and easy guideline. If you're looking for ways that you can ease into your training and get healthy again, the, the thing is, is you have a great opportunity right now to make sure that you're not dealing with any injuries once sport comes back, okay? So there's, there's really no excuses. You should not uh, be doing anything that's gonna aggravate old injuries because your number one priority should be getting healthy. Okay, you cannot perform at your best if you're not healthy. So this is just a really simple guideline, a way to progress through to higher intensities and loads. Starting off, Isometric holds, okay? So you can, I use the example of a knee injury or pain here, and all, everything in the blue is what you might do if you're dealing with anything, okay? You can swap the same concepts out for other parts of the body too as needed. So for the isometric hold, a great example is a split squat ISO. So you would just sit in that split squat position and hold it for time. You could then progress to an isotonic contraction. So this is where you're not moving, but now you're actively pushing in the position. So this might be, if you have something you could put, you could sit down and put your foot up against something that's not gonna move and just push into it. So both of these uh, scenarios, there's no movement going on. The only difference is with the isotonic is you're actually exerting a conscious effort rather than just passively sitting in the position. I think these can be, switched you might flip the order of these two depending on which is more or less aggravating um, for some people this might be the better option to start with okay then you can move on to some actual movement but we're just going to start with the downward portion of that so i love the eccentric only step down so you would stand laterally uh, like facing the wall on your staircase maybe with one leg hanging off the edge, and you're basically just gonna do a single leg squat until that other foot touches the ground. And then I want you to come back up on two legs. So you're not really even focused on the upward portion. You're just trying to slow down and exaggerate the descent, okay? Because the downward portion tends to be less stressful on the joint than the full range of motion movement, okay? Then you can move on to something that's maybe a partial range of motion, um, but we want, so bilateral is both sides. So both arms, both legs. So that might look like a partial squat, okay? Not doing the full range of motion if the full range of motion bothers it. You can then go on to the full range of motion of that, whatever that movement is. I use the squat as an example for both. So sitting a little deeper, again, if it's not aggravating, then you can move on to unilateral. So that's one side at a time. So now you might go back to the split squat, uh, but you're doing the full range of motion, okay? Or this could be a step up, whatever works for you. Then we can think about loading. So maybe you stick with that split squat, but you add a dumbbell on your chest in the goblet position or on both sides. And then we could think about getting sport specific because this is gonna be the stuff that's the most risk to the injured area. So we're talking running, jumping, cutting, change of direction, things like that. If at any point you're working down this process and something causes an issue, you should backtrack and spend more time at the highest position that doesn't cause any problems, okay? Just a really simple framework that you can use. I want everyone to be healthy and at their best when, they're, when they return back to their sport. So this is a simple process that you can attack.